In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this isometric type animation, sort of. Hi, I'm Adam Bennett. This is the video shop. Before we start, I need to point out that the design for this animation was originally done as an illustrated tutorial by Ian Barnard. This is his channel. This is the tutorial. There's a link below. I was showing my students how to create isometric animations the other week, and one of them gave me this image as a reference, so I created this animation. So full credit to Ian for the reference. As always, I'm a design parasite feeding off the creativity of others. So when I said at the start that I would sort of show you how to create this animation, let me explain. I racked my brains trying to decide whether to post this as a tutorial, because while I managed to build and animate the design, the way I animated it is a total mess. I'm not happy with the project file, it's not procedural, as in it's not easy for someone to jump on and amend in any way. When I make animations, I always try to make the project file as easy as possible for someone to jump on, navigate around and alter things. And this is definitely not that. I thought this would be easier than it was. I've done isometric animations and scenes in After Effects before, and I've also created animation with faux 3D stroke. So I foolishly thought this would be fairly easy, and it totally wasn't. In fact, it nearly broke my tiny brain. So to do a step-by-step -step tutorial would be pointless, but then it occurred to me that our Instagram feeds are full of people posting lovely finished renders, but very few people talk about the failures and the struggle of bringing something to life. So for this video, I'm gonna walk you through the free project file, which you can download below, and also post a link to the whole workflow, which is on my sister channel's video shop, Longplay. You can absolutely learn how to do what I've done here, but I'm more interested in pointing out how I things up and what I'm not happy with, because that's part of the creative process that we don't talk about quite as much. So if you watch the workflow video, I've started off by recreating the type using solid layers and just the pen tool and having a grid. So this sort of isometric type to extrude it, I wouldn't use type that's got curves. The problem with this essentially is extruding things in After Effects isn't particularly a problem, but having this stroke that is a consistent stroke width, After Effects isn't built to do that. And I try to hack it and failed. It's kind of a bit humbling showing you this process and project file because it is essentially an abject failure. The animation is fine, but the, the process is absolutely fucking car crash. The workflow, which is like six hours long, basically goes through the process of creating the, the front and back as stroke layers. And if you check continuous rasterization on stroke, can rotate that layer and um, it won't look flat. And there's a good, um, I think there's a motion design school tutorial that I'll, um, I'll pop in the in the comments or the description and when I get a chance. The lines of the extrusion, you've got to manually sort of move those lines to where they need to be. So it's not a case of extrude the type and hit turn on strokes at all. It's, it's basically, you know, you have to cheat it essentially. It's a cheat. It's a cheat and it's a badly, badly done cheat. So the project file, on the surface, this project file looks neat. Final, three versions. And uh, this is just like an alternate look that I played around with. And this version two is the one that you saw at the beginning of the video. And this version one was essentially a version one that I wasn't happy with because it just, the type comes out of nowhere. Um, and I kind of liked having the type sit there and then the anticipation of what's going to happen and then that, you know, these flat dot layers come in and then um, I just thought that was a more fun solution. The actual project itself is a mess. Each, each letter has got its own comp and it's a series of stroke layers and dot comps that I've got that are using Luma mats. And I'm not gonna look at each one individually. You can go through the, you can have a look at the, the workflow if you want, but it's it's not a good solution. It, do, it does it, but I would not want to hand this over to someone else and say, hey, amend the type to read something else. So I've had to just come up with these really sort of hacky ways to make it work so it's pretty embarrassing walking you through this project file if i'm honest so yeah this is how not to do it and if anyone has any better ideas as to how they would do it I'd love to hear it in in the comments please please do from from next week normal service will be resumed i've got a proper step-by-step -step tutorial for this animation here i've got plenty of tutorials coming up as well thanks for watching see you again next time